Hey guys, it's Ash, and in this video, I'm gonna give you guys some valuable battling tips that all beginners should know, and it will help you guys get a lot better, win more, and go a long way in the game. So let's first talk about how to win a battle. To win a battle, you must either destroy your opponent's king's tower, which will grant you an instant three crown victory, or destroy one more tower than your opponent within the given time of the battle. Both you and your opponent are given three minutes, but if within this three minutes there is still a tie, then the game will go to sudden death mode in overtime, which is an extra one minute. And within this overtime period, the first player to knock down any of their opponent's towers will be claimed the victor. However, if neither player had succeeded in taking down the tower within this overtime period, then the battle will conclude in a draw. A win will reward you with trophies. You will obtain the same number of trophies whether you win with a 1 crown or a 3 crown. A 3 crown victory is no more special than a 1 crown victory. In fact, most battles are won by either 1 crown or 2 crowns. Thus, you need to understand when to pursue attacking the opposing king's tower and when it's better to just destroy 1 or 2 arena towers instead. So when should I attack the king's tower? Well, the King's Tower HP is much greater than your Arena Tower's HP. In fact, the HP of the King's Tower is over 60% greater than one Arena Tower. So it's usually much safer to win by either destroying one or two Arena Towers instead and by playing good defense to prevent your opponent from destroying two of your Arena Towers. The King is in sleep mode when the battle begins, which means that he will not assist you on defense with his cannon as long as he is sleeping. In order for the king to wake up, one of the following must happen. One of the arena towers must be destroyed, or the king's tower would have to be attacked. If both the arena towers are still up and the king's tower is damaged, then that will awaken the king. So this is very important. You should avoid attacking the king's tower if you have not destroyed an arena tower as this will awaken your opponent's king on defense and he will start firing at your troops with his cannon. Thus, make sure when you're dropping area damage cards such as fireball or arrows, avoid touching the king's tower. Inflicting damage onto the king's tower before taking out an arena tower is one of the biggest mistakes new players make and this makes a very big difference in battles. Now, after you have destroyed an arena tower, you must decide whether to destroy the second tower or destroy the king's tower. Most of the time, it's better to attack the second tower as it has significantly less HP than the king's tower and is also closer in distance. Usually, the only time you should pursue attacking the king's tower instead of the second arena tower is if the king's tower is at a low HP. Or if your opponent is in the lead by destroying two of your towers and you are low on time, then you need to make that quick decision of whether to go for the win by destroying the king's tower or play it safe and go for the second arena to end the battle in draw or force overtime. Now, the secret to winning every battle is to efficiently use your elixir. Every card has an elixir cost value. To be in an advantage, your goal is to counter your opponent by using cards or combination of cards with a lower elixir cost than what is played by your opponent. For example, if your opponent sends out the knight which is 3 elixir and archers which is also 3 elixir, then together uh, that's a total of 6 elixir. Then if you use your fireball which is a 4 elixir card to take both of these troops out at once, then this is a rewarding move because you spent a 4 elixir card to take out a 6 elixir combo. Thus, you will be placed in a 2 elixir lead. The greater you are in the elixir race, the greater chance you have of winning as you will begin to create stronger combinations. And so, you should always use elixir efficiently. Now, one very important thing is that you should not waste elixir. Your elixir bar is always loading more elixir every second, but it will cap out when it reaches 10. This is very important because when it reaches 10, your elixir bar will not generate any more elixir. Thus, you should always keep your elixir bar loading and avoid allowing it to hit 10. Now, one very important thing is that you should not waste elixir. Your elixir bar is always loading more elixir every second, but it will cap out when it reaches 10. This is very important because when it reaches 10, your elixir bar will not generate any more elixir. Thus, you should always keep your elixir bar loading and avoid allowing it to hit 10. Do not recklessly deploy multiple cards all at once, as this will make it easy for your opponent to counter your combination of cards with a few elixir. 
For example, take the fireball example we used earlier. If you deploy your knight, barbarians, and spear goblins all at once, then you have spent all of your 10 elixir. However, your opponent can simply deploy a single fireball, which is only 4 elixir, and all your troops will quickly vanish, which will place you in a 6 elixir deficit and also render you helpless against any attack your opponent can form with his 6 elixir lead. Thus, it is very important to start slow, make good trade-offs with elixir, and counter with a good elixir lead. Sometimes, it's a better idea to allow your opponent to deal a small amount of damage to your towers and in return take the elixir lead. For example, say your bar is at 5 elixir and your opponent sends out spear goblins onto one of your towers and you only have the barbarian or arrow card to counter. However, in this case, it is better to not use either card to counter the spear goblins. Why? Because the arrows cost 3 elixir, using a 3 elixir card to solely destroy a 2 elixir card like the spear goblin is a poor trade off. The barbarians cost 5 elixir and your bar is at 5. If you use the barbarians card then you will run out of elixir, which means you're allowing your opponent to then create a stronger combo to both counter and target your tower. Your arena towers are protected by archers sitting atop them which means that they will attack and destroy the weak spear goblins with a few hits while the spear goblins deal damage onto your tower. Even though your tower took some damage, it is still a great trade off because in return you have taken a 2 elixir lead. This gives you the opportunity to form a stronger combination of cards than your opponent to deal even heavier damage. Now, when starting your battle, you should first allow your elixir bar to fill. You should not recklessly deploy your cards without first loading up on elixir, as this will only give your opponent the advantage. For example, say you deploy your prince card when the battle just started and you have 6 elixir, your opponent can simply place a tombstone which costs 2 less elixir and can quickly counter your prince and take a 2 elixir lead. Another example is playing a defense such as Infernal Tower right away. This is a bad idea as your opponent can just wait a few seconds to load up on Elixir, plan out a good counter, and also weaken your Infernal Tower without even touching it because of the Infernal Tower's 40 second lifetime. Thus, it's important to first allow your bar to load up. Usually, you will face opponents who will also wait to deploy until they have a full Elixir bar. In this case, you have two options. Option 1 is to deploy your card first. If you reach 10 elixir and deploy your card first, then you will be given a greater elixir lead for every second your opponent remains at full elixir and doesn't play a card. Option 2 is to deploy your card after your opponent has, and if you reach 10 elixir and decide to wait and deploy your card right after your opponent to play a better counter, then that will give your opponent an extra 1 elixir lead. Usually, it's best to deploy your first card at the moment or right before you have a full elixir bar. You should start slow. I have stated this many times that you should start your battle with a slow tempo. And this is a key fundamental to winning. When starting your battle, it is often a good idea to start with a low elixir cost card. For example, say you have the prince and the archer card in your hand. Do you start with the archers or the prince? Well, it's often better to start with the archers due to their significantly less elixir cost. 3 elixir compared to the prince's 5 elixir. Why is this important? This is very important as starting with a high elixir costing card is often dangerous. If your opponent simply places a tombstone card which is 3 elixir cost, then you are quickly losing the elixir race by 2. While playing a low elixir card such as the archer comes with less risk and will also allow you to scout your opponent's first move without having to waste too much elixir. If your opponent decides to send out his giant and musketeer at the same time, then you are prepared to make a good counter with the 7 remaining elixir. While if you have deployed your prince, then the giant plus musketeer combination will, qu will quickly take out your prince. A good idea for loading up on elixir to create a stronger combination of cards is to deploy your troop card at the very end of the battlefield behind your towers. As your troop takes a long time to travel to the other side, it will allow you to load up on greater elixir. Thus, if you wish to create a deadly combination such as the giant with the musketeer and witch, then this requires 14 elixir to do so. To accomplish this, you can place your giant at the far end behind your towers and by the time he travels to the crossing bridge, you will have an additional 9 elixir to complete your combination. Now, which arena tower should I attack first? 
Well, when starting your battle, you may choose to attack either of your opponent's arena towers first. However, if your opponent chooses to attack first, then you should prepare a counter to his threat to protect your tower rather than ignore the threat and attack the other tower. For example, if your opponent sends out archers against your left arena tower, ignoring the archers and going for the right arena tower with your prince card is a bad idea because the archer will deal significant damage to your left arena tower. While there is no guarantee that your uh, prince will make it to the arena tower as your opponent can simply place a tombstone or skeleton army to stomp your prince. And so ignoring the threat and making a reckless play like that can cost you the battle right from turn 1. You should focus on destroying one arena at a time. A big mistake I see new players make often is that they keep switching towers. You should focus on destroying the tower with the lowest HP first and then move on to attacking the second tower while also playing defense if you're in the lead to let the clock run out. Now if you're losing from the start then you can still win. You should try to shift the momentum of the battle towards the direction of your healthiest arena tower. For example, say that your left arena tower has 1000 HP and your right arena tower has 2000 and both your opponent's arena towers are at full health. In this scenario, your opponent will try to constantly target your left arena tower since it is obviously weakened. However, it is still very possible for you to win even if you're trailing. What you should do to make a comeback is to try to force your opponent to attack your right arena tower rather than your weakened left arena tower. In order to do this, you should load up on elixir, uh, play a little defense on your lift on your left arena tower. Remember, arena towers have archers atop them to assist you on defense, so take advantage of that and then make the first move in attacking your opponent's right arena tower with a good combo, such as a giant with musketeer behind. This will make it difficult for your opponent to ignore the big threat and will have him shift his offense to protect his arena tower. With his offense shifted towards the right side, you can now focus on repeatedly placing pressure towards this side preventing your opponent from spending elixir to target your left side. This strategy will allow you to even the playing field while going for a one crown victory. The most powerful attacks are attacks that are played in combinations. For example, a card such as the giant is not much of a threat alone as he is a very slow troop. However, when combined with the ranged attacker such as the archer or musketeer card, it becomes a much bigger task to stop this threat. A giant alone can be taken down by a 3 elixir minion card quite easily, but with the assistance of archers behind him, the minions will not be able to take down the giant as, as he makes his way towards your opponent's tower. Thus, you should constantly try to load up on elixir and also win elixir trade-offs and attack in combinations. So hope you guys learned a lot and liked this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to have a lot more of these Clash Royale guides. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Later.